பாதிக்கப்பட வேண்டிய வேகப்பாடம் ரெண்டு ராஜாக்கள் இரண்டாம் அதிகாரம் வசனங்கள் ஒன்று தொடங்கி பன்னிரண்டு வரை கர்த்தர் எலியாவை சுழல் காட்டிலே பரலோகத்துக்கு எடுத்துக் கொள்ளப் போகிற பொழுது எலியா எலிசாவோடு கூட கீழ்காடில் இருந்து புறப்பட்டு போனான் எலியா எலிசாவை நோக்கி நீ இங்கே இரு கர்த்தர் என்னை பெத்தேல் மட்டும் போக அனுப்புகிறார் என்றார் அதற்கு எலிசா நான் உண்மை விடுகிறது இல்லை என்று கர்த்தரின் ஜீவனையும் உம்முடைய ஜீவனையும் கொண்டு சொல்லுகிறேன் என்றான் அப்படியே இருவரும் பெத்தேலுக்கு போனார்கள் அப்பொழுது பெத்தேலில் இருந்த தீர்க்க தரிசிகளின் புத்திரர் எலிசாவினத்தில் வந்து இன்றைக்கு கர்த்தர் உனக்கு தலைமையாக இருக்கிற உன் எஜமானனை உன்னை விட்டு எடுத்துக் கொள்வார் என்பது உனக்கு தெரியுமா என்றார்கள் அதற்கு அவன் எனக்கு தெரியும் சும்மா இருங்கள் என்றான் பின்பு எலியா அவனை நோக்கி எலிசாவே நீ இங்கே இரு கர்த்தர் என்னை எரிகோ மட்டும் போக அனுப்புகிறார் என்றான் அதற்கு அவன் நான் உண்மை விடுகிறது இல்லை என்று கர்த்தனுடைய ஜீவனையும் உம்முடைய ஜீவனையும் கொண்டு சொல்லுகிறேன் என்றான் அப்படியே அவர்கள் எரிகோவுக்கு வந்தார்கள் எரிகோவில் இருந்து தீர்க்க தரிசனின் புத்திரர் எலிசாவிடத்தில் வந்து இன்றைக்கும் கர்த்தர் உனக்கு தலைமையாக இருக்கிற எஜமானை உன்னை விட்டு எடுத்துக் கொள்வார் என்பது உனக்கு தெரியுமா என்று அவனை கேட்டார்கள் அதற்கு அவன் எனக்கு தெரியும் சும்மா இருங்கள் என்றான் பின்பு எலியா அவனை நோக்கி நீ இங்கே இரு கர்த்தர் என்னை ஜோர்தானுக்கு அனுப்புகிறார் என்றான் அதற்கு அவர் நான் உண்மை விடுகிறது இல்லை என்று கத்தனுடைய ஜீவனையும் உம்முடைய ஜீவனையும் கொண்டு சொல்லுகிறேன் என்றார் அப்படியே இருவரும் போனார்கள் தீர்க்க தரிசிகளின் புத்திரரில் ஐம்பது பேர் போய் தூரத்திலே பார்த்து கொண்டு நின்றார்கள் அவர்கள் இருவரும் ஜோர்தார் கரையிலே நின்றார்கள் அப்பொழுது எலியா நான் சாழ்வையை எடுத்து முறுக்கி தண்ணீரை அடித்தான் அது இரு பக்கமாய் பிரித்தது அவர்கள் இருவரும் உலர்ந்த தலைவழியாய் அக்கறைக்கு போனார்கள் அவர்கள் அக்கறைப்பட்ட பின்பு எலியா எலிசாவை நோக்கி நான் உன்னை விட்டு எடுத்துக் கொள் கொள்ளப்படுவதற்கு முன்பே நான் உனக்கு செய்ய வேண்டியது என்ன கேள் என்றார் அதற்கு எலிசா உம்மிடத்தில் உள்ள ஆவியின் பரம் எனக்கு இரட்டிப்பாய் கிடைக்கும்படி வேண்டுகிறேன் என்றார் அதற்கு அவன் அரிதான காரியத்தை கேட்டாய் உன்னை விட்டு நான் எடுத்துக் கொள்ள படுகையில் என்னை நீ கண்டால் உனக்கு கிடைக்கும் இல்லாவிட்டால் கிடையாது என்றார் நடந்து போகையில் இதோ அக்கினி ரதமும் அக்கினி குதிரைகளும் அவர்கள் நடுவாக வந்து இருவரையும் பிரித்தது எலியா சுழல் காட்டிலே பரலோகத்துக்கு ஏறி போனான் அதை எலிசா கண்டு என் தகப்பனே என் தகப்பனே இஸ்ரேலுக்கு ரதமும் குதிரை வீரருமாய் இருந்தவரே என்று புலம்பினார் அவனே அப்புறம் காணாமல் தன் வஸ்திரத்தை பிடித்து இரண்டு துண்டாக பிடித்தான் வாசிக்கப்பட வேண்டிய வேத பாடம் வாசித்தாயிற்று After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain, where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them, before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking to Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man Let's pray. <coughs> Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you that you are with us. And Father, we pray that as we explore these passages, you would teach us again. Amen. 
So having said that God will teach us again, which is very true, I want to start off um, with you. Tell me, what do you know about Moses? <laughs> Moses was there on the mountain. I don't care what age you are. What do you know about Moses? Burning bush, you're right. He was a man on the mountain with a bush that was on fire and it wasn't burning. He did miracles. True. Well, he saved the Israelites. Who said that? Joshua, you were right. That's very, very important. Anything else? He crossed the Red Sea. <coughs> Anyone remember where he died? This beautiful mountain called Mount Eber. And then it's my favorite place, which is why I know. So he let the people out of slavery to the promised land. Thank you, Joshua. And you can find his story in Exodus. Second book of the Bible, chapter 2. And you can find his death in Deuteronomy 34. So there's Moses. He led his people out of slavery. He saved the Israelites. How about Elijah? What do we do about Elijah? The other man in the year. Who is Elijah? Now, he doesn't have quite the same amount of space in the Bible. What is the there's a veil. Amazing story. Massive drought. And he makes prophets of Baal dance and sing so that their God would come and consume and take this offering. And he was saying, ah, maybe your God's on the toilet. Your, your God is obviously sleeping. He's not coming. It was very insulting and very hilarious. You can find that story in 1 Kings. It's at the very end, chapter 17. He made flour and oil come and keep coming out of a pot for a widow who had nothing. He said to the king, there will be no rain, and there was no rain. He raised the boy to life as well, and he was called the troublemaker of Israel. They have one thing in common, though. In our Old Testament reading, Elijah sees Elijah being brought up to heaven, chariot of fire. No, he has no grave. I've been to Mount Nebo. There is no grave for Moses. Moses says, bye everybody. He goes to Mount Nebo, disappears. And so both Moses and Elijah have no grave. They have no kind of, they are kind of alive to us because there's nowhere we can go to grieve. He, Moses, Yes, he freed the slaves. He made them, or he, God gave them, and he felt a whole new identity. They left Egypt as slaves, knowing that they had no power over their lives. And they entered the promised land ready to go, which is a 180 degree flip. Everything has changed in them. And Moses said to, and, and the story of the Israelites is in Deuteronomy 33, it says, it says, who is like you, Moses says to them, you are a people saved by the Lord. Every other nation in the world was grappling and wondering how they're going to do this. You are a people saved by the Lord, and that was their identity. He changed them from downcast people to honored people, from slaves to free. I want to read you Romans 6, 12 to 14. I'm going to not wait today. I'm going to read you a passage from the Bible. It's from Romans 6. And it's about who we are and who they were and who we're saved to be. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourself plenty. Give yourself completely to God. Well, you were dead, and now you are alive. Sin is no longer your master. For you no longer live under the requirements of the Lord. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. That could have been found anywhere in the Bible. The people of Israel were dead, and they were no They were slaves. 
and then they were free. And it's our story too. We were slaves, and now we are free. You were dead, and now we are alive. So who is this Jesus on the hill? We've talked about Moses, we've talked about Elijah, and the third person on the hill was Jesus. Steve, can you do the magic for me? Ooh. Can you guess what this is? What's that? Pardon? No. Hmm? Anyone else over there think? Mixing bowl. It's garlic. Oh, go on, this one. What's that? Cheese. Oh, Anyone else got any clues over there? Heidi, what do you think? Looks like wood. Looks like wood. Ah, very funny. It's banana skin. Ah, let's go for the next one. Oh, I love this picture. It's beautiful. What's that? Could be a brush. It's not a brush. Oh. It's a book. You see the pages are all fluffy on the outside. Go on, next one. Coffee, you're right. It's my coffee. What's that? Yes! Next one. What's that? Paintbrush. See what's in my kitchen now. What's that, do you think? It's a hard one. And you've got any clues? Any idea? It's a shell. Next one. What's that? Is it? It's not an asteroid. <laughs> You're very funny. Anyone else got any clues? Better guesses? I'll stood in my kitchen if that helps. It's kiwi. Now, if you get this, I don't know, I happen about it. If you get this one, this is a hard one, I think. Anyone got any clues? Soil. Soil? Nearly, not quite. Bread. No, it's not bread. Brownie. Cake mix of brownie. No, it's coal. I know, weird one, hey. Have we done that one yet? No. What beautiful photo. What's that? Salt. You are right. It's salt. I think that's the last one, isn't it? That's the last one. So those photos, they're there because it was hard to see what things were when they were close up. When you didn't have the context and you just had a screen full of lines, you're thinking, what is this? And then when I say book, you're like, oh yes, because you can see the pages. You can see the lines, what is that? It's beautiful, what is it? It's a shell. Oh, it's because of the lines. So when you had the context, you knew more about what you were actually looking at. And it's the same with our readings and the same with Jesus at Mount Carmel. We need more information and we'll learn more about Jesus. Moses disappeared at Mount Nebo. Elijah disappeared on the plains below Mount Nebo. It's the same place. John the Baptist came and he was baptizing in the River Jordan. Guess where the River Jordan goes? Plains of Mount Nebo. All three of them were ministering in the same place. There's more. Moses prepared the people to take, to take their place in the Promised Land. They came from slaves to people who were able to govern. Massive change. Elijah was there telling the people the word of God. Preparing the way. John the Baptist was known as the new Elijah. And so whenever the Pharisees came, they said, we will know when the Messiah comes, because Elijah comes first. We know when the Messiah comes, because Elijah will come first. So here they are, looking in the mountain. And on the mountain you have 
the man who calls the people to be with them and be in the promised land, the promised space. Elijah comes before Jesus and Jesus. If we look before our reading in the New Testament, we've got Jesus and he heals a deaf man. And then he heals a blind man in chapter 8. What are these two people going to see and hear of this mountain? What is God preparing them, their new eyes and their new ears, to see and to hear? Jesus is up the mountain. Jesus is not a mere man. He can't be. He's on the mountain with Moses and Elijah. Do you remember Moses? He met God. Where did he meet God? Where did he get the Ten Commandments? Was it the plain in a river? It was a mountain. Moses went up the mountain and got the Ten Commandments. Where did Elijah hide wherever it would meet God? Up a mountain. And there's them in the sun, isn't it? Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Who can stand in that holy place? Where would you go when you want to meet God? Up a mountain. So here we have a mountain. Who's at the top? Jesus. Is that a mistake? Or is Jesus saying something about the very essence of who he is? Well, they heard. You are, this is my daily Love, son. Do you remember when Jesus got baptized and he came out of the water? And that voice, and the voice said, "You are my dearly beloved son." And the same voice says, "This is my dearly beloved son." This is not new news for Jesus. This is not a new voice. This is the very essence of who Jesus is. So the new eyes have seen that. This man, this rabbi, is not saying to everybody, hi, I'm a rabbi. He's saying, hi, I am God. And this Jesus is not standing on his own. He has three voices around him. The voice of Moses saying, the promised land is in this person. The voice of Elijah saying, the voice of God is in this person. And the voice of God saying, this is my do you know? You need three voices, three witnesses, to make it clear in court in those days. And Jesus has stood around, surrounded by his three witnesses. What Jesus is saying is, at this point you don't need faith. You just need to look. I'm not asking you for any faith. I'm asking you to hear. Can you hear? Can you see? Have you got the context you need? And they might say, yes, I can see that you are something special. The Pharisees, but we haven't seen that yet. And Jesus reminds me, do you remember John the Baptist? He walked exactly where I like him. Exactly. Ate the same food. He is the new Elijah. According to the Israelite story, in this space and in this time, Jesus is obviously Messiah. According to the voice of God, at this space and in this time, on this mountain, Jesus is Messiah. The plan is set. Just as Moses changed the Israelite identity, so Jesus wants to change your identity. The very essence of who you think you are. Romans 10, 13, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord is saved. We know God has no favorites. You don't have to look a certain way to be saved. You don't have to think a certain way. You don't have to behave a certain way, speak a certain language, do a certain thing. Apart from it, call on the name of the Lord. And this is your new identity. Sometimes we're used to seeing Jesus like the close-up pictures. We get little inklings of who he is. 
But today is transfiguration. This is when we celebrate what happened on that mountain. Because all of a sudden, for a few short moments, enough for, Je for Peter to panic, but not much else, we see Jesus as he is. Who he is. We see the whole picture. We see the whole kiwi, the whole orange. Jesus is Messiah. Jesus is the Lord. And he has even taken away the need for a leap of faith because he puts it all out there on that mountain. You cannot run from it. And he wants to change you. You are no longer a slave. You do not have to do the things you did before because you are free. You're like, hmm, I could spend time on my, for me at the moment, Marriage Dragons, let's be honest. I could spend time on Marriage Dragons. Am I the slave to Marriage Dragons? It keeps calling me back. Every time I sit down, Marriage Dragons is like, hello, you can make a big dragon. But I'm free from Marriage Dragons. I don't have to do Marriage Dragons with my five minutes. I can do something more fun, more creative, and less angst. And you are free. And whatever it is that pulls you. But you get to make that decision yourself because you are free. So just like every time I say, I can delete it from my phone. I am free to do that. <coughs> and you can delete stuff from your phone that is not giving you life because you are free. Why are you free? Because Jesus calls us to be a new kind of people. A free people. We are in the promise. Space. That, that's who Jesus is called. Moses called the Israelites. You had to be an Israelite, you had to be a slave, and you were called to freedom. Jesus calls the world, all of us, into this new freedom. You don't have to keep on your phone. You don't have to do it. You are free. So now we have seen our Messiah, our salvation. Our warrior, our freer, standing on a mountain, claiming who we know he is. We know it. He is Messiah, and he is free. So let's, as we go into Lent, Lent starts Wednesday, can we delete from our phones and from our lives that which does not feed us? If it's not good for you, can you put it down? This man. Because you're free. And we pray. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that we can do what he asks us to do because he is your son. Thank you that we are free. And that you have won us free. Help us to walk in. Amen. Um.